Welcome to Dr. Hartwell's Educated Patient Series. Hi, I'm Dr. Hartwell. Today I'm going to talk to you about aortic stenosis and TAVR, or TAVR. Let's first talk about aortic stenosis. The heart has four valves to make sure blood flows the right way. The aortic valve is the last valve blood goes through before reaching the rest of the body. When the aortic valve becomes tight and blood can't flow through easily, it's called aortic stenosis. When the aortic valve is narrower, the heart has to work extra hard to pump blood. This causes the heart muscles to thicken or bulk up. Unfortunately, the heart can't bulk up forever and it gets exhausted. One possible option is transcatheter aortic valve replacement, also known as TAVR. Before getting a TAVR, patients will need the following studies or tests that can be done in one day at the doctor's office. It can be daunting, but these tests will determine the best possible treatment for you. One, echo or echocardiogram. Two, CT scan. Three, left heart catheterization. And four, pulmonary function tests. After those tests, your doctor will be able to determine which type of TAVR will be best for you. There are three ways we can do a TAVR. One, Transfemoral TAVR, two, transapical TAVR, or three, transaortic TAVR. The most common and preferred approach is TF TAVR through the groin. Most TF TAVRs are done either in a cath lab or hybrid operating room by both a surgeon and a cardiologist. After the patient is comfortable, the doctor gains access to the femoral artery and vein. One wire is placed through the femoral vein into the right ventricle of the heart. This is called the pacing wire and allows doctors to control the heart rate. Another wire is placed through the femoral artery. The wire is advanced up the aorta and into the aortic valve. Most of the time, the stiff, narrow aortic valve is opened by a balloon. This is called a BAV, or Balloon Aortic Valvuloplasty. Now we're ready for TAVR. The TAVR valve is brought up across the wire into the aortic annulus. The exact position of the valve is very important, and doctors use a combination of x-ray and ultrasound to make sure the valve position is perfect. Once the valve is in a good position, the heart is paced at a fast rate, and the valve is deployed or opened up on a balloon, so it fits snugly into position. Now blood freely flows through your new TAVR valve. All that is left is to wake up and recover. At most hospitals, patients after a TF TAVR will be in the ICU, the intensive care unit, for one day, and then transferred to a step-down unit. Most patients can expect to be in the hospital for two to three days. However, there are many centers where patients skip the ICU and go straight to the step-down unit and eventually go home in one to two days. Either way, it's a much faster recovery time than the gold standard open heart surgery. After the procedure, patients will work closely with nurses and physical therapists to get them stronger and on their way. TAVR has some amazing benefits like faster recovery, less trauma, decreased need for blood, and decreased incidence of atrial fibrillation, or when your heart loses its beat. However, there are still risks of stroke, needing a pacemaker, injury to vessels, and leakage around the valve, also known as paravalvular leak. Currently, TAVR is approved for patients who are high or intermediate risk for open heart surgery. There is a clear benefit in this patient population. However, for patients who are low or intermediate risk, it is unclear which approach is best because we know that patients who get either open heart surgery or minimally invasive surgery do very well. There are several big randomized trials looking more into this. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching. If you want more information, please contact your physician. You can also visit this website, www.minivalve.com or call this phone number, 713-486-5139.